Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and there is a person that actually exists that thinks that they've managed to debunk Newton's laws of motion. They've also tried to make their own laws of motion, but that's for another day. So that should give you an idea of the amount of crazy we're about to witness, so let's jump straight into it. All right, we're going to be talking about uh, Newton again here, because the troll army came out in force, and... Uh... Right, so first, what do they say? Newton, he invented, or he discovered, no, he discovered the laws like 300 years ago. How did he discover them? Did he like find them in a box? Was he like walking around, look, look what I found. The laws of the universe just sitting right there. Let me just copy them. No. So it looks like what right behind had in his right hand there was toilet paper. And I do have to give a bit of advice to right the hand when he's coming up with his own laws of motion. Don't look to the toilet to get ideas for the laws of motion. Because all you're going to end up with is shit. No, right? He did what I did. He looked around and said, look, this stuff happens. Well, that explanation does leave out a crucial point. The laws of motion have been verified time and time again. If your laws of motion can be shown to be false, well, then they're not going to be laws of motion anymore. Right? Okay, so the problem is that everything he said was fucking wrong, right? Let's start with number one. Okay, he says an object in motion will stay in motion, right? Just that, just that put, well, let's say, no. No, it won't. When have you ever seen an object staying in motion? Well, that's only half of the first law. The first law actually states that an object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by an external net force. The external net force part is actually very important as there are forces such as air resistance and friction that over time will slow down objects in motion. All of this should be really easy to find if you just open up a primary school science book. Let me guess, he's gonna try and prove that wrong by opening up a biology textbook, isn't he? Objects don't stay in motion. So that would be my fucking rule. An object in motion won't stay in motion. It will stop eventually, because that's what happens. But in his fucked up brain, well, it's not his fucked up brain, he's pulling a trick. It was like sleight of hand. He's creating a force, right? Because force is fake, Gravity is fake force of gravity. That's what he's doing. So this person literally thinks that forces are fake. Oh my god. So forces are not fake. In fact, the calculation for working out the amount of forces acting upon a particular object is F equals MA, which is force equals mass times acceleration. So using this, if we have a mass of 20 kgs and we accelerate that mass at a rate of 3 meters per second squared, we would be exerting a total of 60 newtons on that mass. And essentially, whenever an object is accelerating, there is some kind of force present. That force is what makes the object accelerate. Now the mechanism behind what's actually causing the force may differ from case to case. In some cases it may be someone pushing on something, and in some cases it may be an object falling. But that does not mean that forces don't exist. Saying that forces don't exist would be pretty much like saying that acceleration doesn't exist. Acceleration absolutely does exist. The first uh, rule, an object in motion will stay in motion. You gotta throw that part out because it's not gonna stay in motion. And then unless acted on by a force, what is a force? Magic, Ooh. right? So throw, we gotta throw that one out. So does that mean that air resistance is magic? Or friction is magic even? Or maybe even a push from Tara La Rosa would be magic according to Right the Hand. All right, moving on. The next one, force. Again with this fucking force word, bro. Force is magic. I'm just going to say magic, right? Because nobody knows what force is. Nobody can explain what force is. It's just force, force is mass and acceleration. It's actually mass times acceleration. You need to actually get it right before you try and debunk Newton. It's the, the you know, how fast something is moving, how much it weighs is how hard you get hit. So couldn't we say... Fast weight equals hard. K 
can you just repeat what you said so I can make sure I heard that correctly? So couldn't we say fast weight equals hard? What's wrong with that? Unfortunately, my hearing is still good. And he said exactly what I thought he said. And that is that fast weight equals hard. There's so much wrong with that, and I don't know where to start. So let's start with, I don't know, the caveman sounding phrase that he just uttered. So firstly, instead of saying fast, he should have used the word speed. Because speed is something that you can actually measure. Secondly, what does hard even mean? It can mean a lot of things. So not a universal hard or whatever right the hand is talking about. And the next thing that right the hand got wrong in force equals mass times acceleration is acceleration is not speed. Speed and acceleration are two different things. Acceleration is how speed changes over time. There's also the fact that weight and mass are not the exact same thing. Yes, they are usually related, but they're not exactly the same. In fact, things can weigh less depending where on earth it is. Why is force equals mass acceleration better than how hard you get hit equals weight of the object and how fast it's moving? Because acceleration is important. In your example, two of the main things that you would need to consider is how fast the object that hits you decelerates and the mass of that object. It's the same fucking thing. No, it really isn't. That's what it's in there for. It's in there for, for, okay, that was the third one. So he didn't even address the second law of motion, which basically states that a change in object's momentum is proportional to the forces acting upon it. The third one, these were all equal and opposite reaction. This guy was a genius. When you do something, something happens. That's what he's saying. That's what that law says. That is not what that law says. It basically says that if I throw something like this pen, then that pen exerts a force on me equal to the force that I exerted on that pen. A really good example of this is when you fire a gun. When you fire a gun, there is recoil because you're exerting a force on the bullet. That bullet exerts an equal and opposite force on the gun, which pushes you backwards. When you do something, something will happen. No, he's saying when you in the equal when you apply a force in it. No, an equal and opposite reaction. What does that mean? Okay, I'm going to kick a wall. What's the equal reaction? The wall kicks me. That would be the equal reaction, but the wall doesn't have a leg and a foot, so the wall can't kick me. So when it says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction, that does not mean that every action that you do will also be done to you by something else. That's not what it's meaning. What it means is that when you kick a wall, you are applying a force to that wall. And that wall will also apply a force to you. An equal force that you applied to the wall. It's very much like if you've ever shot a can with a nerf gun. That can will fall over due to it being shot by a bullet, but the bullet will also bounce off of the can. Right, so these, he's not a genius. Look how you break it, he's, he's an idiot. He's a, he's a dumbass. He thinks that when you kick a wall, the wall will kick you, and when you throw a rock, it just keeps going. <whistles> right, he thinks force is a thing. What is a force? Force is magic. On the contrary, right the hand, you are the idiot for not understanding not only what scientists have understood for hundreds of years, what high school students taking science classes have understood for hundreds of years. This is all very basic physics. Anybody that understands it should be able to answer a question as simple as if I apply 30 newtons of force to a 20 kilogram object, how fast should it accelerate? Write the hand if you cannot answer that then you don't understand what you're talking about. Unless the force, right? Use the force. That's why Star Wars uses the word force, because they're doing, what is it? I don't know, it's fucking. Deepak Chopra uses the word quantum all the time to try and validate his mystical woo magic stuff. That does not mean that quantum mechanics are fake. I've also heard people say that mushrooms or LSD will open magical portals to other realms. That does not make LSD or mushrooms fake either. Now you get 150 people saying how stupid I am, but they'll never talk about what I said, right? Wrong. 
I've talked about what you've said this entire video. It's probably not good for my sanity though. How about the first comment from one of you troll idiots is to uh, describe how an object will stay in motion. Just that first part of it, right? To explain when, how do we know that? Does that, how, how are we knowing that objects stay in motion? Maybe objects don't stay in motion. Well, considering that Earth is a globe orbiting the sun, Earth has been in motion for billions of years. But I know that you're a flat earther, which is why you're denying basic science. So what about the sun and the moon? If the Earth is flat, then they've been in motion for a long, long time. As long as I've been alive, at least. But anyway, that is it for this video. Leave a like and subscribe if you like this video, and make sure to ring the bell so that you actually get notified of when I post new videos. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. What Jesus, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Jane Spade, Wolfie, Mori, The Friendly Antinatalist, Grey Moor Ghost, and Kid Vicious. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.